I believe the Bible teaches that we are to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. If there is anyone who cannot speak for themselves, it is the unborn baby in the womb. Maybe I'm confused about this legislation. Or maybe the men who wrote it know more about pregnancy than the women in this chamber or across this state or the country who can actually get pregnant and give birth. They don't care about the children, they care about a victory. And if they would receive it and say, say this passes and there were a thousand more babies born a year in South Carolina, or maybe 2,000, they'll forget about them after they're born. They will not want to feed them or educate them or fill their needs in foster care if a mother or family cannot care for them. The GOP has been relentless in their efforts to restrict women's reproductive rights. In the same week that anti-choice lawmakers had their abortion bill blocked in Nebraska, South Carolina Republicans had their near-total abortion ban blocked in the state Senate for the third straight time since the overturning of Roe v. Wade. So mom and dad can give consent to get you married at 16, but not to put you on birth control. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. But you just moved to table a bill that required parental consent to get birth control pills on the parent's health plan. Where's the logic? Well, the logic is I believe sex belongs within marriage because sex leads to children and children needs parents. And so I'm not in favor of the state paying for contraceptives for unmarried children. Uh, I don't think that's a good policy. So if her dad rapes her and she's carrying the child, who drives her to the store to get the morning after pill? The ambulance. Uh, okay. Or at the hospital when she's there. There's a morning after pill that stops probably before conception. And you know what? That's available in Walmart. You don't have to have a prescription to do that. Senator Katrina Shealy was one of several voices of opposition against a bill so extreme that even six Republicans crossed the aisle to end debate on the floor and defeat any chance the legislation would pass this year. The biggest proponents of the Human Life Protection Act are also the same proponents of constitutional carry, school choice, parental rights, regulating vaccines for everyone, especially children. These are the folks that don't want the government regulating masks or licensing any business. They, are, they all think the government should leave our property alone all these things are clear human rights, rights to privacy. When it comes to a woman's body, when she becomes pregnant, she suddenly belongs to the government. Once somebody rapes her or she becomes a victim of incest, she would now belong to the government. Once a woman became pregnant for any reason, she would now become property of the state of South Carolina. Women don't want to get raped. They don't want to get pregnant from living in the horror of an incestuous family. Women don't have sex just so they can go have an abortion. Just like men, I don't think, have sex to get pregnant every time. Last week I was given a spine by one of these lobbying groups, one of the organizations pushing this bill, and I found that to be an inspiration to stand up stronger in support of all the issues that have no huge lobbying groups to support them lobbying groups for foster care, lobbying groups for free lunch, lobbying groups like children who are abducted, abducted, ab, excuse me, abducted by human trafficking. The, the kids I support don't threaten you if you don't support them. They don't send you hate-filled letters. They don't protest out in front of your church calling you nasty names in front of your family and your grandkids. They don't send you gifts. These kids can't afford that. They look at you with sad eyes or heartfelt hope for a better day when maybe, just maybe, they can have a dad, a dad to walk around with them. A dad can play baseball with them, a dad to throw them the football. They're not a newborn, though. The total ban that's being debated here today clearly places the rights of a fetus over the rights of, of the women and girls who will be forced by, by our male-dominated legislature to carry that fetus to term. So they're not just attacking our constitutional rights, they're attacking our God-given rights. And since our male-dominated legislature can't control God, 
They've made it their life's mission to control us.